This room is amazing. The walls are covered with buttons. Every time you press a button, a random thing drops. It's like opening a mystery box. Dale suddenly woke up. He woke up in a pure white room. He found a button on the wall. Curious. He pressed it. In an instant, countless little angels appeared in the room, and then disappeared instantly as well. Then countless buttons appeared on the wall. Dale was so scared that he screamed. After a while, Dale calmed down, and started to press the buttons on the wall. A toothbrush fell out. Dale switched to a different button and pressed it too. A loudspeaker. A potted plant. A large vase of chopsticks. What's going on here? Dale suddenly got excited. He wanted to try to see what would happen if he kept pressing the button. A pair of chopsticks kept falling out. Soon they piled up into a small mountain. Dale accidentally touches the button next to him. Dale screamed in pain, annoyed. He pressed another button, only to see the button, turned in a circle, and revealed a PP. Guys, the taste was a little salty. The gas Dale was outraged, and picked up a loudspeaker. Dale kept pushing the button again and again. A radio, teddy bear, welding mask, a messy bunch of things fell out, but not a single button could let Dale out. Dale, bored with wearing a mask, laid on the recliner. He was so hungry that he didn't want to move. He threw the ball in his hand, and accidentally hit a button. A plate of sushi fell out. Dale's eyes glowed. Whatever he wants appears, but how could he eat sushi without soy sauce? Dale pressed the buttons around him again, but no matter how much he pressed, all that came out was sushi. Dale had no choice but to pick up the sushi. He took a big bite and ate it. It's better than being hungry. The sushi had no taste but he ate in such a panic that he almost choked. Dale ate all the sushi, and then he pressed the button beside him. Then a bottle of soy sauce popped out. Dale slapped the soy sauce away. Are you playing with me? Why didn't it come out sooner? Dale lied down on the bedroom floor, and pressed another button. A pair of 3D glasses fell out. Dale put them on. Just then, he saw. Oh my god, there was a little angel in the sky. The angel told him to press down on himself. Dale screamed with excitement. He thought this must be the button that could let him out. The little angel had come to save him. Without hesitation, he pressed it. Suddenly the room went dark. A huge countdown appeared behind him. Oh my god, I hope it's not an explosion. Dale was so scared that he frantically pressed the button, hoping that the countdown would stop. But it didn't work. The countdown ended. All the buttons on the wall disappeared. A giant peach slowly descended above him. Dale was gassed and fainted immediately, and woke up screaming again. It seemed that there was no way out. He earnestly read the comic book. After he finished the fifth episode, he wanted to read the sixth episode. But when he pressed the button, the seventh episode came out. Dale changed the button. But the eighth episode and then the ninth episode came out. It did not let him read the sixth episode. Undeterred, Dale pressed another button. A door appeared behind him. Dale was looking for comic books and did not notice the door. Luckily, when the door was about to close, Dale finally found it, but he forgot which button he just pressed. How long can you stay in a room with no cell phone and no Wi-Fi? Dale could hardly find the exit. The door was closed. He pressed a button at random. An indigenous person ran out, and went into the wall again. Dale was at a loss. How could he get out? He pressed the button again. A stream of water rained down on his head. Dale kept trying. Finally, he found the button to open the door. He pressed it and rushed toward the door, but the button popped up and the door closed. Dale pressed down again, and then ran even faster towards the door, but the door closed as he was about to run past it. Dale used a running style, where his foot was on the button and rushed forward. The button popped up again quickly. Dale failed again. Dale thought of using tools. He grabbed a fly swatter and swatted it, and started running again. Still no luck. Dale found another jump rope to shorten the distance, but still failed. He thought of the trolley next to him. He placed his feet on the wall, his body lied on the cart and he pushed himself against the wall. But the cart just spun in place. It did not move forward at all. Dale pressed the button again. This time he didn't let go. The door never closed either. Dale put the vase of flowers on the button. The weight of the vase was too light and was lifted up. Dale thought of filling the vase with water and then placing it on the button so he could get out. He pressed the rain button. But what he didn't expect was the water flow only pinpointed Dale. Wherever Dale went is where the water fell. Guys, it's like they're watering flowers. Dale tried to use various positions to fill the bottle. However, the water he received was not enough. Dale came up with a new idea. Fill up the vase with sushi. Dale kept pressing the button, until finally the vase was filled up. He never thought that when the vase was full, he'd be unable to lift it. He reached out and tried to take out some sushi, but the mouth of the vase was too small. He couldn't reach in. Dale grabbed a pair of chopsticks, and picked out the sushi one by one. Finally, 
he could lift it. He carried the vase to the button, but forgot which button it was. He tried and pressed a button, but the native came out again, without bias. The native kicked the vase, the vase instantly split in half. Dale broke down and screamed again. He picked up the sushi on the floor and put it on the button. The door opened again. Dale quickly put more sushi on it, but the sushi couldn't hold down the button. The button popped up again. Dale thought of the tape again. Left and left again. He glued it on. After observing that the button did not pop up, he turned around and ran. Only to hear a poof, the button popped up again. Dale was still determined. He glued the tin and tape together, and stuck it all the way towards the door. He didn't expect the tin could not stop the button from popping up. While sticking, the tape was pushed up at the same time. It was hard to stick to the door. The door closed again. Dale's buttocks were also caught in the door. He cried out in despair. He gave up trying to get out. One day he woke up from his sleep. He tried to brush his teeth and found that he was out of toothpaste. He forgot the button for toothpaste again, and pressed a random button. Surprisingly, a rope fell from the sky. Dale saw the rope. He jumped up happily. Using the rope, he would be able to get out. Man trapped in the room cannot get out. The rope let him feel hope again. He pressed the button and jumped on the rope, with his foot on the button to open the door. He swung up with all his might. Finally, he reached the door before it closed. He was so happy that he almost took flight, only to find another door inside. The door was locked. He couldn't open it. He had to get out first. When the door closed, it caught his ass. He was so angry that he kicked the wall. Unexpectedly, a golden key appeared in the air, and quickly disappeared. Looks like this is the key to open the door. Dale forgot which button it was. He could only blindly press any button. The dog was too aggressive. Dale was so scared that he almost peed his pants. Dale tried again. This time he got it right. The key turned around and disappeared again. To make sure he didn't get it wrong, Dale prepared to make a mark. He points his finger at the button. Backing up a bit, he picked up a slice of meat and marked it, but the mark was wrong, and out came the hound dog. Dale was devastated. What the hell is going on? He was right on the mark, never giving up. He tried again and again. This time he finally got it right. He quickly marked the spot. Dale jumped on the rope again and swung, but he couldn't reach the key button. Dale was in trouble again. At that moment he saw the plunger on the ground. He swung up the rope first, sucked the plunger to the wall, pressed the key button, swung back and grabbed the key, then he stepped on the door. This time he finally succeeded. He quickly inserted the key, turned the lock, but the door still wouldn't open. He looked up and saw, there was a combination lock on it, but what is the code? He had to come out again, as expected, his ass was caught for the third time. He was so angry that he screamed, grabbed the plunger and threw it out. He did not expect the indigenous person to come out. The two looked at each other awkwardly. The native seems to be saying, what the hell are you always calling me for? The native turned around and left. Only then did Dale realize that the native had three numbers written on his head. The combination lock was also three digits. Isn't this the password? The same process again. The code was successfully matched. The door lock finally opened. Just when Dale was about to open the door, the door inside closed. The space inside was too small. There is no way to open the door. Dale was caught in the middle of the door and was in a dilemma. The space was dark. He began to miss the days inside the room. There was food and drink and fun inside. At least he didn't have to go hungry. Dale didn't know how long he had been there. The sushi outside had gone bad. He suddenly felt a breeze blowing. He reached out and pushed open the door next to him. Surprisingly, it opened with a pull. Light shone in. Dale rushed out. He finally saw the exit through a door. However, the exit turned into a room again. The exhausted Dale, desperate to see the door closed. Dale's colorful pajamas had lost their luster. Countless little angels appeared on the wall again. They disappeared again and became buttons. Dale started to press them again. This time nothing fell out. But what he didn't know was, the buttons he pressed controlled the outside world. The wrestlers outside suddenly stretched their necks and banged their heads against the gong like a rattle. Dale looked to the exit above his head. He grabbed the button and started to climb up. What he didn't know was, with every step that pressed a button, the outside world changed. Dale didn't know how long he had been climbing. His hair changed from a bob to a shawl. He finally came to the exit. Here was a bigger button. Dale did not hesitate to press down. What will happen next? Looks like we'll have to wait for the sequel to find out. Maybe this button could end the world. The film ends here. This film is called A Symbol. Our question for this issue. If you were in this kind of room, what would you want to come out of the mystery box? Post your answers in the comment section. Alright, that's all for this issue. 